We'll start off this hour with a look at the GOP primary. It's been a fun week. We've had primaries in Wisconsin, Maryland, and here in D.C. on Tuesday. And Mitt Romney won all three. But despite all the talk of the presumed nominee, which, by the way, has been going on since the beginning of this campaign, there's another candidate that still draws quite a following wherever he goes. Take a look at Ron Paul at the University of California at Berkeley yesterday. All right, keep in mind, this is the university Ronald Reagan called a haven for communist sympathizers, protesters, and sex deviants. Yet about a thousand students came to hear Dr. Paul speak to show their support, despite the fact that Ron Paul is a Republican. So, once again, we want to bring in Mary Willison on the show. She's a volunteer organizer and avid Ron Paul supporter. Hey there, Mary. I, I know I've asked you this before, but here we are now into April, much further into the campaign, and still Ron Paul is drawing crowds like this. What is this all about? Um. Well, the campaign, I think, is just kind of starting to gear up. I think Ron Paul's strategy was kind of to fly in under the radar through the caucus states and scoop up the delegates, which he did, despite the mainstream media not reporting to you on that. Uh, you know, most of the delegates have not actually been selected yet since they have to go through several rounds of um, voting through their district, county, and then state level conventions and then move on to the national level. So, yeah, I think that starts off in. That starts off, I, I believe, in uh, Colorado uh, in about a week and a half when those official uh, delegate tallies start coming in. You were at this rally at um, Berkeley. Uh, what was it like? It, it sounds to me like you're losing your voice. Is that because you were yelling? <laughs> I was at the one at UCLA, actually, Christine, uh, and it was huge, and I was yelling a lot. Uh, okay, so, so UCLA. So we, we saw at UC Berkeley about 1,000 students. I was at uh, University of Maryland last week covering uh, nearly 1,800 students and young people who came out to see Dr. Paul speak. How, many, uh, how big was this one at UCLA? UCLA was anywhere between six and 7,000. There were people, the stadium held 5,900. The fire marshal stopped letting people in because of the amount of people standing. So there was still a line of about 1,000 people outside wrapped around uh, the building or the out, outdoor area. Uh, the one that I saw in UC Berkeley, I think, I, I didn't get an official total, but the crowd to me looked like a few thousand, not a 1,000. And I know that the one that happened in Chico was something like 6,200 people. And Wisconsin last week, 5,200. So the crowds are actually growing. And uh, I think we're going for the Guinness now. We're going to definitely keep, keep it growing. Wow. Uh, it is amazing when you think about those kind of numbers coming out. And, and uh, you know, what struck me when I was in Maryland was just uh, not only how many people, but, but how it was almost like Ron Paul, uh, this 76-year-old man, was a rock star. Even after this rally, uh, a, a lot of people, a few hundred, waited around sort of backstage, you know, outside of the uh, Coliseum to wait for him to leave, to send him off. Um, what is it that makes it, you know, a 76-year-old man connect with so many young people? Freedom, liberty, it's popular. Uh, the man has been fighting for us. Uh, he makes us really proud. He's inspired so many people with his message of uh, economic liberty, personal liberty. Um, as people start to become aware of the message and spread it and it, it grows, um, it, it just it, it stirs up something and gets people motivated. So I think a lot of people um, were surprised, uh, especially if you think of Berkeley uh, historically. If you take a look back, UC Berkeley uh, and the surrounding communities, this is sort of where the anti-war uh, movement was born. So that part uh, is not surprising. You know, there are, there are countless examples of some of the largest marches back in the 60s and 70s uh, taking place around Berkeley. It, it seems uh, to still have today an overwhelmingly anti-war, anti-intervention Interventionist community. We're, we're showing pictures right now uh, back from that era. Uh, certainly, that is a message that Ron Paul ha has never wavered on. He doesn't agree with uh, intervening in other countries. He doesn't agree with, with the size of the military or war. So, so to me, uh, you know, that is something uh, that seems to make sense. But, um, you know, do you think around California, as you just talked about the size of all these rallies, uh, do you think that that's kind of one of the main reasons uh, that people are coming out in such large numbers? Peace? 
I think that peace is definitely a message that resonates here in California. And yeah, it is all, it's been a pretty anti-war state. It's also quite a liberal state. And so I think that that's why a lot of people are surprised by the crowds uh, that Ron Paul is pulling in. And the, they like to accredit it to the youth or, you know, th that's not the point, though. Actually, the crowds are quite mixed and, you know, there's people, the professors are, are showing up, the, we've been encouraging the students, bring your parents, anybody who's on the fence and undecided, those people are coming out to the rallies as well, and we're registering them as Republicans to vote for Ron Paul. Uh, it, it seems funny, too, because a lot of people, especially when they saw, uh, you know, what was going on in Berkeley and UCLA, uh, I'm from California, so I know that, that the stereotype doesn't totally fit this, but there is a stereotype from a lot of people outside of the state who, who just think Californians are a bunch of, you know, hippie pot smokers. And so uh, a lot of them also saying, well, uh, these are just people who want to legalize marijuana because that's what Ron Paul wants to do. He wants to legalize all drugs. What do you say to these people who, uh, you know, are... are Basically saying people like you, Mary, are uh, supporting Ron Paul simply because of his, uh, you know, lax stance on marijuana. I think it's absurd. Uh, the reason why we support Ron Paul is because we, he gives us personal and economic liberty. His message of liberty is something that everybody can appreciate, especially in a time like this when all of our liberties are under attack, when we have a president who is enacting laws like the National Defense Authorization Act and giving it, uh, indefinite military detention to American citizens without a trial. And uh, now the homeland, uh, other acts that he's put in place where we can't protest, where also all resources are now owned by the government. A lot of stuff that people are not aware of, but the youth are paying close attention to, and you know other issues, uh, Social Security and things like that, that we're fighting for to secure for our parents and our grandparents. I'm not going to be able to provide for my parents. I'm not going to be able to provide for my children if the government keeps uh, printing money to bail out big corporations and, you know, tax the American people into our graves so that we can't even start our own businesses. So, Mary, you seem to be talking a lot uh, about also, uh, as you were talking about in the beginning, uh, about the delegate numbers. Um, what do you predict in terms of, I mean, do you, do you think that, that some of these states that went to some of the other candidates will, in fact, go to Ron Paul once the official delegate counts come in? I think that the people who got motivated to go and participate in the delegate process are uh, probably a majority of Ron Paul supporters. And I think that if, uh, if there were no ties binding anyone to any particular candidate, then you would see that uh, when, by the time we get to the national convention in Tampa, that a lot of people will turn out to be Ron Paul supporters. Uh, and it's nothing like a covert operation or anything. It's just that Ron Paul is winning over hearts and minds every day as we go along. Well, luckily, you're saying this on television. If you're right, we can play this back for all of our viewers and say, we told you so. Mary Willison, volunteer organizer and Ron Paul supporter in our Los Angeles studios.